This is my 2023 Husqvarna Norden 901 Expedition. This is not a demo bike, this is not a loaner. This is mine, I bought it, I paid for it with my own money. I wanted to give you my first impressions after riding this motorcycle for about 400 miles. If you watched my previous video, you know that I traded in a 2022 Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, which is a completely different bike and riding experience. This bike costs a lot more than that bike, so I do expect a lot more out of it. One big note for me on this bike is I wanted a no compromises motorcycle. With the Himalayan, with the Interceptor, I still have the Himalayan, but with those bikes, there are compromises that I made and I wanted to not be held back in any way. I am planning a video that gets into the details of why this bike was the right choice for me versus all the other options in the market, new and used. One of the huge selling points for me was that this bike included all the goodies. It had the center stand, the panniers, the protection, it had cruise control, heated grips and heated seat, all the things that I expected it to have, have held up to what I want them to be. I don't feel like I need to replace any of those things. So when I talk about this bike being the full package, it really is the full package. I don't feel like I need to go add a bunch of stuff to this. That said, I do have some things that I already have, like a GPS, that I am going to fit to this bike. The center stand. It does take a little um, oomph to get this thing up on the bike. I find that to be true even with my Himalaya in it. I have no problems moving this bike around the shop. I'm able to pull it up on the side stand so that I can get in and out easily. The bash plate is thick. Thick. It's off-road worthy. It, I think it can take a beating. I'm not gonna go run it into trees just so I can prove that to you, but I do feel like the bash plate is exactly what I wanted it to be. The one question I have is, am I gonna be able to add highway pegs to this at some level? I may be able to rig something up in some of these existing holes. I don't wanna go add bars to this just so I can put highway pegs on it, and I may just have to live with taking an extra stretch break here or there. The panniers, I'm gonna do a whole video on these panniers. It'll, it'll probably be a quick review, but I will say they are good quality snaps. They feel quality. Um, I do, I am impressed with the panniers. The pannier racks are gonna serve my purpose with my giant loop bags and the hard mounts I'm able to, uh, I'm gonna be able to fit the giant loop bags onto this bike and I'm excited about doing that. I don't see anything wrong with these panniers except for the fact that they are smaller than my giant loop bags and I already have the giant loop bags. If you don't have panniers, can you get away with using these? Absolutely. They're 36 liters, 18 liters each, and so you can carry a whole lot of luggage with you. I've been running around, getting groceries, running errands, going back and forth to, to the lake. I, this thing has carried all my stuff with no problem. The heated seat and heated grips. I live in Alabama. It's 95 degrees outside right now. It has been 95 degrees outside. It's hot. So I haven't had the heated grips and heated seat on that, except for one morning when it was about 65 degrees. I got a lucky quick ride in. I turned them on. They're warm. I will tell you more once I get this thing in some actual cold weather, but the interface is easy and they do seem to warm up within about five minutes. The Explorer mode. I haven't fully put the Explorer mode to the test, but it is nice to have some customization in how the throttle operates and how the slip regulation works, and you can do a lot of that on the fly. So the Explorer mode, which comes with this motorcycle, which is an extra upgrade in the software on the standard Norton, I don't know if it's the if I'm gonna get the most value out of it, but I do think the Explorer mode is gonna come in handy. The heavy duty hand guards. So these hand guards, if you watched the reviews where they took the South Africa trip with all the journalists, um, they crashed this bike and, and they were pretty rough on these, on these hand guards and I think they're gonna hold up just fine. I don't feel the need to add bark busters to this bike. It has adjustable levers. I have the levers adjusted all the way closest to the grips as I can get them because I like my hands to be kind of all the way around the levers. The lever pull is satisfying and easy enough. Yeah, if you're sitting holding the clutch at a stoplight for five minutes straight, your hand can get a little tired, but I have no issues operating the levers. I, I don't feel the need to change the levers out. The taller windscreen on this motorcycle, which is the same windscreen that you get on the standard KTM 890 Adventure. The windscreen overall does do a great job at deflecting the air. I rode this bike through the rain. It did a good job of keeping the weather out of my face. I do get a little bit of buffeting, kind of a side-to-side -side buffeting at speeds above 70, 75 miles an hour, but I've been completely pleased with the performance of the windscreen. I don't feel the need to add a deflector or anything to it. I may try that in the future just to see if it does something significant, but the windscreen I've, I've been very pleased with. I've talked about round headlight club. So I love a round headlight. The headlight on this thing is adjustable. You can change the beam direction of it with this knob on the console and 
The included fog lights are fantastic. They're a good safety feature. They're nice and bright. Everything's LED, so the headlight and fog lights, as well as the tail light. LEDs all the way around. The turn signals are, are robust. I, I feel like all the lights on this thing are gonna live up to standard. I mean, they're LEDs, so they're gonna basically gonna last forever. But I have seen the new Denali CAN bus package, which would be kind of an interesting ad. So Denali, if you're watching and you wanna maybe work together a little bit, I'd love to throw some parts on this motorcycle and give a full demo. The livery and the paint scheme, this adds zero horsepower to the motorcycle, but I do love the way it looks. The WP Explorer suspension. I'm gonna do a full video on how you can set up your suspension. I went through the manual and, and looked at the comfort, standard, sport, full payload settings. So I'll do a full video on that, but I have been very pleased with the suspension. It does make the bike sit a little taller. I'm gonna talk about that more in the riding experience section, but this suspension, coming from the Himalayan especially is a massive upgrade. I don't know if I would be able to notice the difference between this suspension and the standard Apex suspension that comes on the KTM 890 Adventure. Seat height, it's tall but manageable. I'm six feet tall. Getting on and off of this bike is no problem. When everything's going according to plan, no issues. I had one instance where I was getting it off of the center stand and I had a little, a slight slope to my right and I was planning to fall left. I was able to catch the bike. It did take some strength. So the seat height is something to consider. This bike has excellent power delivery in every gear. I, I'm able to roll on the throttle if I'm in two, if I'm in fifth gear when I should be in fourth or third, the bike lugs through it, no problem. I'm, I'm impressed with the lugability of this bike. One thing they talked about in the 890 engine marketing material a while back is 20% more weight, I think in the crankshaft or the flywheel. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know, but um, I have ridden my buddy's KTM 790 Adventure and I do feel a difference in this bike versus the 790 platform. There is that more lugability. So if you're looking at the 790 versus this, I'm not saying that's a deciding factor, but it is something to consider. The quick shifter. This quick shifter at 4,000 RPMs is smooth as butter. It is so good. For me, it definitely took some getting used to. So the quick shifter is manna from heaven. I love the quick shifter. I encourage you using the quick shifter. So there's no clutch up or down needed, including first to second gear. The brakes are precise and effective. Great feel. I've ridden this bike through some twisty roads at the full capacity of my riding capability, okay? But the brakes have been great front and rear fully responsive. Um, I did get a little ABS action. The J. Juan, we've got stainless steel lines, so they've got the Husqvarna logo on them, but I, I feel like these are these brakes are really, really good. The TFT Dash, I'm gonna do a full demo on the TFT Dash. It is bright, uh, it makes sense, the layout is good. The one complaint I'll make, Husqvarna, please make the odometer available on the standard screen, the full odometer, not just one of the trips. So that's a complaint I have about this bike so far. The buttons are sturdy, they click satisfyingly, they're easy to navigate with my hand still on the handlebar, so I'm, I'm really happy about the position and the feel of these buttons. Cruise control, works really well. It's not adaptive cruise control, it's not dynamic, so it doesn't change with the speed of traffic, but I set cruise, I can change gears while I'm in cruise, um, I can deactivate cruise by clutching, braking, or rolling forward on the throttle. It does have a single press start, so you, you don't have to hold the start button down, you just press it once, let it go, and the bike will start itself. Speaking of which, let's get an audio check on this stock exhaust. I've changed nothing about the exhaust on this thing. Let's take a listen. I may investigate a mid-pipe for this thing just to bring the heat down, but that's a different topic for a different day. The low slung fuel tank, I talked about this in the first video, the weight being down low like this, this bash plate being down low like this, this bike feels extremely planted, it is balanced, it does not give me this, this top heavy weight thing where I feel like the bike's gonna fall over on me, I'm very pleased. So let me walk through four key scenarios, the commute, on the highway or touring, on a twisty road and off-road. For the commute, I've ridden this bike to the office, I've ridden it around town, it has great manners. You know, I completed a couple of stop sign challenges on this thing 
And I'm not the greatest rider in the world, and this thing is easily manageable around town. Again, that seat height might be an issue uh, if you're under six feet. On the highway, cruise control is magnificent. I rode this bike in the rain. It feels complete, completely planted. I have plenty of power to make passes, go around trucks. I don't feel like I'm getting blown around the road. I really appreciate this motorcycle on the highway. The seat is extremely comfortable. I've been in, it, in the saddle for an hour plus at a time with no, I don't feel the need that I have to get off the bike. It's comfortable, it's wide, and I'm probably as sensitive as any rider is when it comes to needing to get off of the seat. The twisty road on this bike. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's nothing like riding something with a 17-17 wheel set up. The 21-inch front wheel does make the, the push into the turn a little heavier, but man, this bike, it will lean over. I have done hairpins on this thing, twisty roads, no problem, plenty of power, plenty of brakes, plenty of maneuverability. This bike will do great on a twisty road. The off-road. This thing rides great off-road. It's what it was made to do in so many ways. It was made to do all of these things. And off-road, people will kind of look at me sideways. It's like, you're gonna ride that off-road? And if they haven't, you know, if they're not an aficionado like you and I are, they, they don't think about riding a bike like this off-road. It does great off-road. It's got plenty of power. I've still got, I'm still in the 600 mile break-in period. So it kind of chirps at me when I'm getting after it too much. But man, this thing is so much fun on off-trail. Of course it's gonna do well on that. I'm going to get into how well it slides, how the traction control does. I'm gonna figure out how to do a wheelie on this motorcycle because I don't know how yet, but it's got all the power I need to do it. I'm gonna be very careful about that. Mom, if you're watching, I'm, I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna be careful. The grip, the tires, the tires have performed really well so far. These are the Pirelli Scorpion STRs. Been very satisfied with the tires, grippy, Grippy on-road, grippy off-road, grippy in the rain, everything, so, so good. What are the cons of this motorcycle? I'm gonna go through these real quick. The suspension raises the seat height. I've talked about the seat height. Would I prefer it to be lower? Absolutely. Another con, this bike is expensive. It was almost $17,000 out the door, not considering the trade-in. That's a lot of money for a motorcycle. I don't know if there's a better value on the market. In short, it's expensive. I do think it's worth it, but it is not a small amount of money. It costs more than the standard Norton. It costs more than comparable used bikes. But if once you consider the full package, there's a value case there for sure. And there's limited availability. There's only a few of these things around. If you see one, I hope you've done your research and you are ready to pull the trigger because it will probably be gone in the next few minutes. So that about wraps it up for me. I can't wait to get this bike fully broken in. I'm so close to my 620 mile first servo. I think we'll truly unlock more power on this motorcycle. I'm gonna be doing touring. I'm gonna to be doing camping. I'm gonna do my best to share everything I can about this bike. If you have questions, if you have commentary, please do so in the comment section below. I'll try to respond to everything. Until next time, ride safe.